I am what we call a historical archaeologist, meaning that my work focuses on looking at societal interactions over the last 500 years or so. What's the best place in the world to go to study archaeology or to learn about archaeology? In truth, there are a lot of wonderful places in the world to learn about archaeology. In terms of academics, really the best thing to do is either try and acquire a bachelor's degree in archaeology and uh, learn a bit more about what particular aspects of archaeology interest you. And there are programs across the world that specialize in all different periods and, and disciplines of archaeology. Uh, so it really depends on what you're interested in and uh, that will probably dictate where you end up for an academic uh, institution. In terms of if you're just interested in archaeology and want to learn more about it, there are sites all across the world that welcome visitors. So there are always opportunities around if you jump on the internet and just do a quick search for local sites in your area. I'm sure there are, there are locations where you can visit and learn more about the past in your particular uh, area. So whether you just want to hop on the web and learn a bit about a particular site or, or the discipline in general, or you want to go the more dedicated route and actually earn a degree, take, you know, take classes, earn a degree, and uh, pursue archaeology full time, there are plenty of opportunities available uh, no matter where, where you live in the world. Working in the field is uh, generally a great time and very interesting. Only a small percentage of an archaeologist's work is actually conducted in the field. Uh, the average archaeological project will span six weeks, eight weeks, sometimes ten weeks of actual in the field excavation. And then much of the rest of the year is spent uh, processing data from the materials that were recovered, either studying artifacts, cleaning, washing artifacts, cataloging them and then writing publications based on the information that we've learned, whether that be a site report, which is just designed to describe the material that was recovered, the excavations that were undertaken, or a journal article, which is uh, designed to make more uh, in-depth interpretations and, and synthesize the data that was found at the site. Archaeologists also spend a lot of their time outside of the field or, or in the office uh, working on grant proposals, trying to secure funding to go back into the field the next year or in a few years' time. So the actual time spent excavating is somewhat minimal compared to all the other time that we spend working with our data, presenting our data, and preparing for the next uh, period of data collection. What jobs are available for archaeologists? When we think about jobs in archaeology, we generally subdivide them into jobs in the academic realm and then jobs in the non-academic realm. And in academia, uh, the most common job for an archaeologist is to work as a university professor. You will be teaching students during the academic year and then usually excavating in the summers and working on your, your data uh, in the interim. However, academia is only a, a small portion of the jobs that are available for archaeologists. Many more are available in what we call CRM, or Cultural Resource Management. And these are essentially contract jobs where uh, a firm of archaeologists and architects and architectural historians will work as contractors when a new company is building a building and they want to be sure that they're not going to impact any historical or archaeological resources, they will call in a CRM firm to do an excavation and assess the area and make sure they're not going to negatively impact any of the resources that are there. And This can be a great opportunity for those who perhaps don't want to go into academia and get a PhD and, and uh, deal with everything that, that the academic life encompasses. Now there are also opportunities for people who are interested in archaeology, uh, perhaps get a degree in anthropology, um, or who are just interested in history that don't involve excavation. You can work in museums, you can work in, uh, at national historic sites, you can work in laboratories. The opportunities really uh, are pretty wide for, for someone who's interested in archaeology. Occasionally people will bring artifacts to me and ask me uh, if, they, if I know anything about them. Uh, occasionally I get the question, how much is this worth? And these are the questions that as archaeologists we tend to try and avoid because we don't want to assign value or a monetary value to uh, objects or, or remnants of the past because we're not in the business of buying and selling these things. We're in the business of determining uh, what kind of information we can learn from the material culture from the past. So I say that's probably the most common question I get that I try and dodge a little bit and say, well, let's talk about what we can learn from this object rather than 
what it's worth, for instance. Uh, generally speaking, they are asking me about recent discoveries that have made news, um, whether that be an actual archaeological dig that has been a, a profound find and uh, affects the discipline in some particular way, or if it's some of the more shadier dealings like um, for instance, uh, pseudo-archaeological finds, something like uh, ancient aliens, um, I, or if watching a television show on the History Channel or some other channel about, uh, we might say, controversial interpretations of the past. And my friends and family have asked me about these things, and my job as an archaeologist is to try and navigate away from these perhaps uh, more controversial or, or less scientific interpretations of the past and explain why these are flawed views and direct people into uh, perhaps some more valid information. One of the things I like the most about archaeology is the chance to get outside, to travel to new places, and to find things that haven't been seen for hundreds or thousands of years.